Welcome everyone to Virtual Japan Week, Introduction to Odori, Part 1, Episode 1. Today we're going to learn the basics on putting on a kimono. So we're going to start off wearing our tabi with a cotton bottom and top. If you're taking odori or nihonbuyo, you would want the cotton one so that you don't slip and slide in the synthetic one. Uh, to start off, I usually wear either leggings or shorts um, and a top that is e either a tank top or one with a low neck in the front and back. And then we're going to put on an undergarment called a jiban uh, before we put on our kimono. So when you put this one on, you kind of you want to keep it away from the top of your neck, and it doesn't have to be on too snug in the neckline here, as it is meant to just take on sweat. Let me just have a little tie. This one comes with a tie, some don't, so you would need to buy one. Let me put the lower part. Um, if it's hard to come by, you can always use an underslip, uh, a long one, and this just wraps around. So the way that we wrap this, both the top and the bottom, is that the right hand goes first, and then the left hand is going to come across over the right side. And the same thing with our top the right first and then the left side comes over if you wear it the other way uh, that's how they wear it for when they dress people who are deceased so you want to wear it with the left side over the right okay now we're going to move on to putting our kimono on top and kimonos are meant to be longer than you are. I know sometimes we like to go and buy kimono for fun um, to wear and we think that it needs to be the same length as our body but actually you need it to be longer than our body. And typically when you put on a kimono, again here right side and then the left, the overhang here should be at least two inches or two fingers um, width from where your obi is. So your obi and then you'll have two inches and you'll see that as I go along. So I'm going to put this one on. Um, when I put the right side in, I'm actually looking to see how long it is. I'm going to make it just about a half an inch or less above the ground, bringing in the right side and then the left. And typically we have this either um, on the edge of where our hip is or sometimes wrapping around a little bit, depending on how wide it is. And we're going to use what we call a himo or a tie. Um, I'm just going to use these which are made out of cotton. Um, we used to make them out of bed sheets when we were younger. And wrap this around. Make sure it goes around twice around your either hips or around your waist, depending how long you need to have your top. Okay, and then what we do is we put our hand, well, I'm going to pull this up all the way around so that it's flat and then on the overhang we put our hands in to bring the material down flat over on top on my collar it's open as one single so I have to fold it in to be half that width And then I'm going to bring it 
fairly close to my neck and all the way in to the side here. Down to the other side. So we're nice and flat in front and in back. And the uh, seam is in the middle of your back going all the way down. I'm going to take another chemo or cloth material to hold this one, this layer in place. And again, you want to make sure it goes around twice. You can either tie it into a bow, or the other thing is after you go around once, you can twist it and tuck. going to straighten everything out so it's nice and flat. I can bring my creases over to the sides of my body. Okay, and before I put my OB on, I'm going to put on one more. Instead of a thin string, this one is a little wider. And this just holds everything in place so it doesn't come undone. twice, tighten it, and then I'm just going to twist it and tuck it in. Okay, now I am ready for my obi, and this is a rather modern one. And I'm going to start with about a foot and a half from the end to start wrapping from my midsection front and around. I still have a lot more, so I'm going to go one more time around. And then on this side, what I'm going to do is fold it in to make this half and then tighten. So I'm going to fold it, pull, pull, pull. So like you would if you were wearing a corset, you need to make it a little tight and pull that half side loop it around and tighten again. Twist, help hold it in place. And then we're going to open the long side up. And we're going to fold it in. Um, typically I like to go about the width of my body or a little bit wider for the bow. And then you can just adjust it so it fits flat this way across your body. And this tail portion is down below. I'm going to wrap around and we're just going to go through the tied portion. So I'm not going to go through the other layers yet. Tighten and then we can fluff out our bow. This is called a butterfly bow. And it's a nice common one that we wear for odori practice or for obon, which is the uh, kind of like the Day of the Dead in Mexico where we're celebrating our ancestors and we uh, dance in a circle at the uh, Buddhist temple. Okay, and so then the rest of this is now going to go through the layers of just the obi. So through all the layers, inner layers, we're going to reach in and reach down over here to grab it and pull it through. There. Straighten it out. And then I'm going to hold the tail portion, the obi, and I'm going to scoot it around so that it's in my back in the center 
and then I fold the tail in, and fold it in, and then one more time, and tuck it under. There. And that's how you tie the OB. Sometimes this gets a little bit crinkled, and so we, what we like to do is have something that's stiff to go here, which we call the OB board. Uh, you can make one out of cardboard um, just to help keep the OB from wrinkling up. So then we stick this between the layers, first layer and the second layer of the OB. It goes a little bit around the side. We'll keep our shape. And as I said before, you have about one or two inches below the OB, and that means that you've done it correctly. Um, the length of your sleeves should be about here. For me, this is just a little bit shy, so this is actually a little short for me. If you have long arms, you know how hard it is to find one that fits long enough on, on the arms, okay? And then, so we're going to just uh, talk about the sensu, how to open it. Um, so you hold the sensu in your right hand. You are going to put your left hand on this side and put your thumb on the side of the folds of the fan. And then these fingers on the other folds, but not covering the whole thing, just a portion. On this hand, your right hand, your left four fingers over this side and your thumb is going to be pushing the bamboo stick portion to away from you so that it will open up. So if my thumb is here and then I'm going to push away. Okay, so we push that one away and then you can hold your fingers still just gently here as you continue to open the fan up. Closing the fan. So we're just going to put our hand this way, thumb in, and let it gently close down. So again, with your thumb and your fingers here holding, you're going to push that first one open. That's probably the hardest one after that it gets easier to just go ahead and open it as you're opening it your hands just naturally fall around the sensu and then when you want to hold the sensu you put your thumb where this brass button is and in the center and then your fingers go around okay so now let's close it again so if with my thumb here, I'm just going to turn the sensu. So now my thumb is over on the side. I can put it to the side of my body. My thumb in, my fingers up. My hand is in this position. And we just close on down. Okay, another way to open. You can push that first one open. And then you can grab it in this direction, flip, and you can open it up that way. But typically we only do that on particular kinds of dances or songs, and that this is the generally the basic way of opening your sensu. Another fan that we carry is one for just when we're hot. It's a smaller version, and it has many um, bamboo sticks, so when you open it up, it looks like that. And this is what we use to fan ourselves if we're hot. We generally do not fan ourselves with this fan. Um, this is considered a dancing fan, and it's special that you use it for particular um, elements to describe or show how a character is portraying um, a particular action, whether it's 
becomes a sword or if you're fanning yourself it's more elaborated and it's not really meant for everyday fanning. I hope you enjoyed today's workshop and we'll see you again for part one, episode two next time and we'll go over on some general dance movements. Thanks for staying tuned. See you again.